Okay, so my name is Matthew Darwin. I'm a volunteer with the Canadian Red Cross. Uh, I started volunteering earlier this year, but I've been uh, mapping in OpenStreetMap for two and a half years now. So uh, the Canadian Red Cross is uh, really interested in uh, one of the main things is disasters and uh, planning for preventing disasters, disaster response, as well as uh, disaster recovery. Uh, some of the things you kind of need for disaster planning are things like, where are the people? Where are the key infrastructure in your community? Or where are the things that you need to watch out for, the hazards? So um, Canadian Red Cross is really involved in uh, rural communities, and that's where we're going to focus on in this presentation. So uh, the Red Cross has been uh, part of Missing Maps since uh, 2017. And uh, as part of that, uh, it's really focused on, you know, completing the map in Canada. Uh, so a lot of time we're talking about missing maps, we talk about Africa or some far off place, but we have places in Canada which are uh, kind of very similar. We have people and the map is blank. So um, we want to help fill that in. So a few projects that uh, we're working on, uh, disaster response. So uh, as I said, so if there's a tornado or a flood, getting the help to the people in need as quickly as possible. Um, building relationships uh, with data in Canada. So there's lots of maps in Canada, but maintained by lots of different people in lots of different formats, including paper. So building relationships with all those people and trying to bring all that together uh, to build a story. And then once we get those data and we try to convince people to make that data open so it can be used by anybody, um, but then showing stories back to the data providers on how we use their data so that we encourage them to continue to share. Uh, indigenous communities in Canada um, really would want to provide them training and resources so that they can build their own maps um, and they can tell their own stories uh, in OpenStreetMap or other tools. And what I'm going to talk about for the rest of this presentation is really about uh, mapping for first responders. So if you think, uh, I put a few screenshots of different parts of OSM in Canada. So I'm from Ottawa, and if you look at it, it has quite a lot of detail. Somebody's drawing fences in backyards and things like that. Uh, but if you look at the bottom uh, right corner, you know, there's just blank sections of map. So the, co the coverage in Canada is very inconsistent, so the Red Cross is really focused on the, those rural blank areas. So here's a beautiful prairie intersection. And if you notice, there's a distinct lack of any road signs at this intersection. So if you're trying to do an emergency response here, um, how do you know, really know where you are? Of course, there might not be any cell phone coverage. So, you know, live maps, looking at that, that's not practical. And in fact, it's not just maybe there's no road sign. In fact, maybe the road doesn't even have a name. Um, that's, that's actually the case. So we have these weird, uh, you know, descriptions of the land that you're on that you're from, you know, 1800 surveys or something. So one of the projects uh, that we've uh, done, which is completed, is in Saskatchewan, where one of our Red Cross volunteers uh, is also a volunteer firefighter. And uh, they said, well, it would be great if we knew where all the little bodies of water are. Well, I'll call them ponds for the sake of this discussion. Um, so that, you know, if there's a fire, then we know where the water sources are that we can bring to the to fight the fire. So we talked to some different communities. We used the um, tasking manager. We asked the volunteers. This is a remote mapping project. We didn't actually go on site. But, uh, you know, looking at the satellite images, map the buildings, the driveways. Driveways can be really long if you're in a prairie area. Uh, so that's important, as well as the, uh, the water bodies, uh, which is obviously the important part here. And then uh, lots of validation, which I'll talk about in a second. So here's the results. Lots of water. And this is the product that the, the fire department can use now. So they have the OpenStreetMap base map. And we didn't put those weird address things into OSM because that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But they can put that in as an overlay and then they can use it, they can search, and hopefully they'll at least get a bit better uh, response. So here's what some of those ponds looked like. So obviously, mapping that was a bit of a challenge in terms of which ones should we really map or not. And then since we had a lot of different mappers, the validator role was to make sure that that 
data comes consistent uh, at the end. So that's really, so uh, obviously addressing is a challenge. If we actually had, you know, houses which had street addresses, it would make things uh, a lot easier, but we don't. So that's it. So I, I really look forward to having more collaboration between Canadian Red Cross and OpenStreetMap in the future. Thank you.